Hey guys! It's Peter and Mary. And welcome to the Living with, with Hope, Hope podcast. podcast. You speech to me <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a weekly conversation where we dig into God's Word and explore what it means to live with hope in Jesus. Here we are. Mary and I just celebrated 10 years of marriage. <laughs> You laugh every time I say that. Really? Yeah, it just gives you this like <laughs> little girl giggle. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's exciting. I feel like I've kind of been looking forward to this for a couple of years. Yeah, for the last like two years, she said, we're going on 10 years of marriage. <laughs> we're going on 10 years. So now guess what? We're going on 15 years. It does seem like this milestone of... I don't know, 10 years is a good chunk of change. Yeah, it's a good chunk. And I also just like think it's really funny when people are like, wait, they see my rings and they're like, wait, you're married? Because I look young, apparently. But not in like a, oh, you look youthful, but like a, wait, you look like you're in high school kind (laughs) of way. I don't love it, but since I can't change that fact then I just think it's funnier and funnier the older I get. And then they're like, wait, you're married? And I'm like, yeah, we just celebrated 10 years. And they're like, what? You got married when you were 10? <laughs> just to clear the clear the confusion, we got married when we were 21 and 22. Yep. And... I'm 31 now. I'm 32. That's Hence 10, 10 years. years of marriage. Yeah, we've... We've had a lot of adventures in our marriage, and I say adventures with like an asterisk. Okay. Because adventures asterisk. There's the title of our book. (laughs) I was just thinking that. Okay. Okay, but hold on. Is that a good idea? No. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me the asterisk first. Basically, well, first of all, I'm just gonna like take a moment to congratulate myself because I'm pretty sure I said the word correctly. Asterisk? I think that might be the first time in my 31 years that I've said that word right. What do you usually say? Asterisk? Asterisk? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so okay. tell me the ast- the, the So footnote. the adventures. The footnote. Was it adventures? Adventures. Asterisk. asterisk. <laughs> it's just hard to say. Adventures, including the ups and the downs. Mm. Adventures, including... Flying to another country for a big grand adventure and our style of big grand adventure included being in and out of an international hospital and then having to leave like six months early. I don't know. And like, so it wasn't an adventure. Yes. Was every moment exciting mountaintop experience? No. Were some of those the most tearful frustrations? Yes. Was it still an adventure? Absolutely. And that goes not only for that adventure, the adventure of 2014 to 2015, but... She's talking about when we went to Scotland and her health declined and that whole journey. Yeah. But I mean, even... I think back on our marriage and think, you know, we lived in the downstairs of that house. We rented the bottom floor of a house. This was our first year of marriage. Yeah. I was in seminary. Yeah. I was trying to find a place to live and I found this place on Craigslist. Bottom floor of a house, a family with two young kids. Yeah. And it turns out that there were shared spaces. Like they had an office down on our level of the house. Yeah. Yeah. And, anyway, and walk through our living area to get to the laundry every single day. Yeah, I kid you not. I'm just gonna paint this picture. Uh, to be clear, we wouldn't have said yes if we knew that they would be walking through our apartment every day. That would have been weird to say yes to, but we didn't know that ahead of time. So imagine this: we've been married for ten, uh, twelve days. We had just been on our honeymoon went back to Maryland, and then drove to Massachusetts, where we moved into this bottom floor of this house. We're laying there. We've been married for 12 days. And Saturday morning, the next day, we we wake up, 
and like we're laying in bed and the wall right here we hear like pitter patter of children walking down the hallway and the mom and dad walking down the hallway and we were just like this is odd Craigslist strangers are walking right outside our bedroom (laughs) but that in itself was the beginning of so many adventures yeah we loved we're, living we're, there. We're going somewhere with this on the podcast, by the way. I, I, I just we I, we're reflecting on ten years of marriage, but I wanted us to think think about this and these stories of adventures asterisk. <laughs> but yeah, what, what <coughs> as you look back on these ten years of marriage. What are some of the things that God has taught you? Wait, I wasn't finished the Danvers story. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So anyway, that was the first of many adventures. And that's what I was saying. Yes. It was an interesting housing arrangement. We then moved 30 minutes away to the bottom floor of an elderly man's house. And we helped take care of him and all that. And that was the next adventure. And in between those, like, you know, every day in between there, we were doing crazy things like finding free stuff on Craigslist when a family was moving and they were getting rid of all this great stuff. And we'd like be like, get in the car, we're driving downtown. And like, (laughs) you know, those are the sorts of adventures that we will remember fondly for so many years. And that's how it all started. And every single year in between there have been adventures, some with a lot of different twists and turns that we didn't expect. Okay. I think that's the end. So you were saying, what has God taught us? Yeah. I want to reflect a little bit on what God has taught us. And in doing this, I want to go back to a passage that was very important to us at our wedding. Okay. And that I think... You know, here on YouTube, uh, those who watch The Fry Life, our daily vlogs of this journey of life where we're showing just the mundane and the mountaintops and everything in between. And that journey of showing our lives, we, we really kind of try to put our marriage relationship on display, um, not as l- like... A, a model or anything like that, but as just a, I think it's deeply theological and um, it's part of Mary and I's philosophy of marriage is, th- is that marriage points to something bigger. And in like marriage is just like the shadow of a greater reality and I think it's important for us, as I reflect on 10 years of marriage, to have that mindset. The marriage is the shadow of something bigger and greater. And so we take marriage as that, as not the end of life, like like the goal of life or the best thing. Um but it is a picture of something that is the best thing. Yeah. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. But before we, before we really dig into that, what would you say top lessons you've learned in marriage? That's some or, pressure. Okay. It doesn't have to be top. What are some things you've lessons, learned? Lessons you've learned. Like? Well... So, sacrificial love is huge. Yeah. It's important when you're heading into marriage that you're in it to serve. And I think people kind of jokingly say, but very truthfully, when we got, when you get married, you realize how selfish of a person you are. I think they also say that about having kids. When you have a child, you realize how selfish you are. Um, And I think that that's true. I think it highlights struggle areas like selfishness. And then it stretches you in that area toward selflessness. Yeah. And. um, Yeah. Yeah. Sacrificial love is. So one of my friends before we got married, I think. He had gotten married a couple years before, and and 
he said to me, I don't know the direct quote he said to me, but basically, sacrificial love is what marriage is all about. And, and in that, like there's sacrifice is intentional. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not something that happens on your convenience. It's something that happens by your compulsion. Like I am choosing to sacrifice. And, and I think some of us view sacrificial love as, um, like we have to sacrifice. It's kind of like that compromise, which there are compromises in marriage. But yeah. but sacrificial love is more about compulsion to sacrifice rather than sacrificing because it's necessary. Does that make sense? Like it's, I want to sacrifice to love Mary, not just because it's necessary for us to get along, but because that is at the heart of what love is, is me laying down my agenda, my priorities, and my comfort to say, there's something better than me and myself, but in this union of marriage, I want to choose out of this conviction and compulsion to love sacrificially. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, so I've learned along the last 10 years, m- many times of um, that struggle of between comfort and a greater vision of what love is. You yawning again? <laughs> Sorry. Here she is yawning. <laughs> I think I, I was trying to sit up and I realized I think if I sit up my body thinks it's time to stretch and okay. then yawn. Okay. okay. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. No. So that, you know, I, I think that that is a lesson. I, I think one of the things um, that marriage has taught me is to hold life loosely. And in the book of James, I just listened to this a couple days ago on my morning walks, where James says, um, Holly's sniffing the microphone. <laughs> uh, James says, uh, don't say today or tomorrow we'll do this or that. Um, but rather, it's James chapter 4. He says, um, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. And I think... Um, not a great time to play with a crinkly toy, Ollie. Yeah. <laughs> we, re- we used to record these up in our third floor where we would lock the animals out. But that's our Christmas explosion area at the moment. <laughs> Also, we thought maybe the third floor was making me yawn more. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) Real life here, friends. Yeah, we're in the living room. The dog's playing with toys. The cat's meowing. And James is saying... Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. And honestly, 2020 has taught me that even more. Yeah. To... So not only has our marriage... And inevitably, CF life, CF tells you or forces you to realize that you can't always plan ahead. But also 2020, because we're like, yeah, and now 2021, because we're like, yeah, yeah <laughs> we don't know what tomorrow brings, what next week, what next month. We can't control the future. We and. And so much of our lives we spend trying to grasp for control. And I think just being married... Can you take that toy from him? (laughs) Being married to someone with a chronic illness has taught me to hold life really loosely. And I think I used to... um, Early in marriage, I used to 
hold on to my plans and my vision and expectations of what life should look like. And I'd hold on to that. And Mary and I just spoke for an event. We were talking about these expectations versus reality. And the reality sits in. And when we hold on to those expectations too tightly, what happens is we start to... um, It leads to discouragement and this disappointment. But when we start to loosen our grip on these things and start to approach life... And I I think Mary's taught me this. Um, She's kind of... Um, a free spirit in terms of personality, but I think a lot of that grows out of yeah. her journey with CF and recognizing that she can't control whether she's going to feel well or not feel well. And so commitments have always been hard. And so it's... Because she, of having to break those commitments when I don't feel well well enough for... Yeah, and and that that hasn't been easy for her at all, but she I think she's taught me more than anything in marriage that when we hold tomorrow and just the substance of our lives with this openness of the Lord's will and his sovereignty and his Providence in the midst of our everyday lives. Like, that is... Okay, here's what marriage has taught me in the last 10 years. To keep going in the podcast, even if Mary yawns, and then can't (laughs) stop laughing. That's what he's learning. No, I think... This, if you if you had to ask me, what is the one thing? What what is the one attribute of God that you have learned most? I'd say the through so- marriage. I'd say the sovereignty of God. Yeah. I've I've learned to love God's sovereignty, mm-hmm. and by sovereignty we mean that He is over all, that He is outside of time, that He. Um, that nothing that happens in life is outside of his view and his ability to redeem yes and use for good yes and marriage yeah marriage has taught me to love god's sovereignty yeah yeah Yeah. Ephesians chapter 5, we read at our wedding. It is a picture of marriage. We memorized it before our wedding. The summer... Oh, wait. I was trying to memorize it in the summer, so six months. Months before our wedding, yeah. Do we remember it? (laughs) It's been 10 years, 10 and a half years. Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love as Christ, as Christ loved, loved us. Us. And, and gave, gave himself, himself as up, a... Up for us uh-huh. as a fragrant... Offering. And sacrifice to God. And that's that sacrificial love. And that's an important preface to what comes later in Ephesians chapter 5. And we read later on where it says... You want to read it? Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so wives also submit to everything in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water in the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever loves, no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. So we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and 
the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. Okay, so this is our theological and philosophical underpinnings of our marriage that Mary and I, we put a lot of effort into planning our wedding to make it a display of the truth that marriage is a picture of something greater. Mm -hmm. And that greater thing Paul calls a mystery. And that mystery is Christ and his self-giving love for the church. Meaning his people. Those who put their trust and faith in him. And so at the end of the day, I think... As the years go on, I just see more and more. I think we had a vision for it back when we got married. Yeah, I think as the years go on, I see more clearly that marriage is a gift. We're grateful for it, but it's not the end. It's not the fulfillment of life. It's and and in fact, after this life. When our lives are said and done, our marriage was simply a symbol, a picture, a model to show us deeper the glories of Christ's love for us, and that one day that our union with Christ will be fully realized, and marriage will be like this shadow that we once experienced. Mm-hmm. And, and that is, um, it speaks meaning into today, into this 11th year of marriage. Like it speaks meaning into that because it excites me that our relationship and our marriage is not um, what life is all about, but it teaches us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think as we let that sink in to our lives, um, I think of those of you who are married, and marriage is hard. It's um, a lot of hard work, and um, it's not this um, glamorous thing, but man, is it good. And the goodness in it is that self-giving, sacrificial love that points us to a good, good father who gives of himself Mm -hmm. for us. And I also think of those of you who are listening who aren't married, and maybe you feel like, you know, that that's a longing, but... It's not something that has come along in your life. And, and my encouragement to you after 10 years of marriage is that marriage doesn't bring fulfillment. And um, God calls us all the seasons and, um, and maybe lifetimes of, of singleness. And in that, I, I, I think we as the church have sometimes done a poor job at really stating the fact that marriage is not the goal. Yeah. And Jesus and his church is the goal. And and the greatest fulfillment of our lives are found in community with the God who loves us and with the body of the God who loves us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's experienced in the union of marriage and sometimes that's experienced in the union of the church. And there is great joy and um, a glorious reality that marriage is simply a shadow. It's, it's a gift. It points us to the greater reality of the gospel, yeah. that Christ loves us. He gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And he, he, so the, the calling there is, be imitators of that. Live in that sacrificial love that you are loved 
and give of that sacrificial love in the people who God has called you to love.